Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, a B-52 bomber loses an engine literally. Active winglets approved for a Cessna CJ business jet. EASA approves Robinson's R-66 Marine variant. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom. It's January 9th, 2017, and this is Airborne Unlimited. A B-52 lost an engine, quite literally, during a training mission out of Minot Air Force Base in North Dakota on Wednesday. In the 1940s, Boeing pioneered the concept of mounting jet engines on a pylon underneath the wing on their bomber aircraft for several reasons. One of these reasons was that a catastrophic engine failure might result in the loss of the engine, but would not cause damage to the wing that it was mounted to. Such was the case in the engine failure. One of the aircraft's eight underwing engines fell from the aircraft during flight operations over an unpopulated area about 25 miles northeast of the base, according to a report from Defense News. The pilot was able to land the aircraft safely. The B-52 has been in service since 1952, and it's reported the Air Force currently has 76 of the aircraft in its inventory. Engine upgrades have been performed on the B-52 over the years, and the Air Force plans to continue to fly the B-52 until 2040. The FAA has granted supplemental type certificate to Tamarack Aerospace Group for its active winglet system for the Cessna CJ business jet. The FAA STC follows the validation of the European Aviation Safety Administration STC granted in December of 2015. Tamarack now has the approval for the installation of its active winglets on the Cessna CJ, CJ1, CJ1 Plus, and M2 in the US and Europe. The company claims its active winglet reduce fuel consumption, provide an increase in the maximum zero fuel weight, and provide increased range and higher initial altitudes. Tamarack says their active winglet system is unique because it is comprised of a wingtip extension, a highly tuned winglet, and load alleviation technology. The load alleviation is accomplished through small control surfaces mounted on the wingtip extension structure that alleviates gust and maneuvering load, so there's no need for the wing structure reinforcement. The company says this reduces weight and the cost of installation. According to the company, the technology is scalable and can be installed on any aircraft type. Additional airframe programs are in development. After the break, emergency floats approved for the Robinson R-66. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. The European Aviation Safety Agency has issued final approval for the Robinson R-66 turbine helicopter marine pop-out float installation. The approval came after tests proved that the floats complied with what is referred to as a C-State 4 requirement. The C-State refers to the height, period of time, and character of waves on the surface of a large body of water. The tests were conducted in Spain at a facility capable of simulating the required conditions. According to Robinson, the six-chamber floats are designed for emergencies. They inflate within two to three seconds of activation. A lever on the pilot's collective releases pressurized helium from a tank located under the aircraft's right rear seat. Floats may be activated and flown at speeds up to 80 knots. 
The installation adds approximately 65 pounds to the helicopter's empty weight, and when not in use, floats roll up and stow in protective covers along with aircraft's landing skids. Each week we share with you an online video that one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Aero Video of the Week. Final lift off of if someone ever tells you to never stand behind a large jet bomber when it adds power for takeoff, this video will prove that's a good piece of advice. Search B1B Blows Away the Spotters on YouTube. After these messages, EAA IMC Club announced inaugural meeting. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Explore No Limits Flying in the FAA Certified Sea Ray Amphibious LSA. One of the top three best-selling LSAs in the U.S., Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray comes equipped with a Rotax engine and exhibits extraordinary handling on land, water, and in the air. Check it out at www.searay.com. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, Laura Hudson is summarizing a few of those other great stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Thanks, Chris. The EAA IMC Club has announced that it will hold its inaugural meeting in Fort Washington, Maryland on January 19th. The topic of the meeting will be a scenario-based discussion of ways to build proficiency in instrument flying. One of the founders of Falwell Airport in Lynchburg, Virginia has gone west. Lawrence Falwell passed away last Saturday. Lawrence Falwell was inducted into the Virginia Aviation Hall of Fame in 1991. The airport was purchased in 2009 by Liberty University. Here's another case of a baggage handler being locked in the baggage compartment of an airliner. A United Express Embraer E-170 jet on a flight from Charlotte found the unticketed passenger when it landed at Washington Dulles. It appears he suffered no physical harm. Unique announced the expansion of its customer service. The upgraded one-year warranty extends to all Typhoon and Breeze series products and automatically guarantees against manufacturer defects from the original date of purchase. Unique has 12 service centers in the U.S. and Canada. Epson announced the immediate availability of its Moverio BT300 Developer Edition of the Moverio Augmented Reality Smart Eyewear Platform. The Moverio BT300 Drone Edition glasses for DJI hardware will be available to pilots later this month. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Back to Chris for the rest of the news. Thanks, Laura. It seems like only yesterday that the Consumer Electronics Show featured the latest development in all kinds of electrical gadgets, and it had nothing to do with aviation. This has certainly changed with the introduction of small unmanned aerial systems. This change led to FAA Administrator Michael Huerta showing up at the Consumer Electronics Forum in Las Vegas last Friday to outline the work that has been done on integration of UAVs into the national airspace system. However, he did didn't offer anything new in his remarks. Huerta said that with all the advances in drone technology over the past year, the only sure thing is that things are going to get more complicated, not less. Huerta discussed the status of FAA regulations and said, we know that as regulators we can't dictate from above. We have to work in close collaboration and partnership with industry and those who fly unmanned aircraft both for recreation and for commercial purposes. His presence at the convention brought home the message to those in attendance that the small drones go far beyond being electronic toys and are subject to federal regulations. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited stream daily Monday to Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. 
you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Keep flying. We'll see you tomorrow.